Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to create a sort of matrix dodge ghost motion. So it's gonna look a little something like this in the end. You see it has these motion paths behind the movement right here. Um, used sort of, I guess you would say, uh, creatively it can create you know a cool instance of motion. Works best with tripod shots just because uh, you would have the whole sort of world moving if you it wasn't on a tripod. But you know, you can make it work in however which way you want. So let's get started on this. First thing we're gonna do, as always, is create ourselves a new sequence like so. And then we just need to drag in our footage right here. And we are going to uh, let's change the sequence settings to fit the footage. And then we'll trim off the very beginning. And then let's maybe like scale it in a little bit. Uh, I use black bars on the last one. You can really use anything just to make it sort of fit. Uh, if you have extraneous stuff, it, it might start looking a little weird. You kind of want to just focus it on your subject as much as possible. And there we go. We have this going. And you see now it's just me flailing my arms and nothing actually happening. So what we need to do is we need to first, um, I'm going to remove the audio. Hold down the Alt key and click down here to remove it or right click and unlink your choice. However, I'm just gonna hold it down, delete the audio, and now we need to duplicate this footage uh, however many times you want. The more you know duplications you have, the sort of more, I guess, motion instances you'll have behind you. But what I like to do is right around five. So the easiest way to duplicate footage is actually to hold down the Alt key uh, and then click on your footage and just drag up. And you know, just keep the Alt key held down, you can just drag up five instances like so. Before we do that though, we need to add an element onto here, which is to change this into screen. The only reason we wanna do that before is so we don't have to go to every single instance and change them all to screen. Now it duplicates them and they're all on this blending mode screen. So let's talk about what that is. Basically screen is going to be um, screening for brighter objects beneath the footage. But it's it's almost like if you took a piece of film and you put it over a paper, how you'd still see the paper underneath it, but the piece of film is also there over it. So what happens when you keep screening these is that it's going to keep getting brighter and brighter. Like if you took the same image and I had light inherently from it and you kept putting them on top of each other, you're going to keep making it brighter and brighter and brighter. So what we need to do now is we need to mess with the opacities just a little bit. And you can actually do this mathematically. So what we have here is if we want to make them all exactly the same, uh, bring it back down to the exact exposure that it started at, we would divide 100% because they're all 100% by how many instances we have created. And since we've created five, if we change these all to 20% like so, so we go through here and we change them all to 20%. You'll notice that it goes back to the opacity of the original. And just like that, now it looks exactly like the original footage. However, if we start to offset this, you'll notice that without with them all exactly the same, it creates sort of um, almost like there's no motion at all, like there's nothing guiding it. So instead of setting them all to the exact same, what we're going to do is we're going to set a bottom layer, a sort of master layer, a little bit higher. So we'll set this one to a right around 50%. And so now what we need to do is we need to divide the rest of the 50% into these four. And you know, you don't have to do this by hand, you can just look up a calculator, you know, what's 50 divided by four, that's gonna give us 12.5. So that's what we're going to put onto all of these. So this one will be 12.5 and this one will be 12.5. And so as long as by the end, all five year clips add up to 100% or right around 100, like within 0.1 or 0.2, then you will have the footage looking exactly the same as the normal. And now what this does is this creates the, the sort of 50% motion. That's the one that's gonna be like your actual person that's doing the movement first. And then all of these other ones will be ghost trails. And you could do a trailing ghost and that might actually be kind of fun. So instead of, um, Let's see, we'd think about this. If we added 2.5 to this one, or made this one 17.5, and made this one 15, and then this one is 12.5, and this one is 10. Now every single trail is gonna be slightly sort of lesser than the trail before it, and that could look really, really neat as well. So I, I'm just gonna go with this because I think it's an, a neat idea, um, and I think these add up, so that's 30. 
15, 25. It might be a little bit short. We might be 5% short, but it looks fine and that is okay. So let's jump into it now. The next step we need to do is to actually create these sort of motions. And so what we're gonna do is we want the sort of this one to be the one that drives the motion. So we want to actually make this one sort of start the latest because if we make it start the earliest, then it'll be so all the others will move before it does. And we want it to be the one that moves and drives the motion, drives the, you know, the iterations of this ghost effect behind it. So what we're going to do is we're going to shrink this by eight frames, right? Like so. And this is, you know, you can kind of move these frames around as long as they're sort of equally spaced. I mean, they don't have to be equally spaced, but making them equally spaced makes it look a little better. So we shrink that one by eight. So now we need to shrink this one by six. And what I'm doing is see right beneath my cursor. Uh, let's zoom in right here. If you notice right beneath my cursor, there is that number right here. And what we're trying to do is once it's up here, we need to drag this back to a six over there. And then we'll drag this one back to a four and then drag this one back to a two, and then this will be sort of, you know, left over. So it's eight, six, four, two, zero. And so now if we start from right here, you'll notice that we start to get this, uh, the movement. What we first need to do, however, is move these all back on top of one another. And then you'll notice that we have the, mo the movement going right there. And the reason we collapse them on all on top of each other is because what this does is it's going to make them all now offset by two. So this one is uh, basically going to be the one that sort of starts. So you can see the, the darker one moves first and then the iterations go beneath the darker one. And that creates the effect, right like so. So basically what we did here was we created, we had the beginning one, which is the very bottom one, which is sort of our master layer, the one at 50%. This one is going to be eight frames ahead. And then everyone behind it is going to be two frames behind that. So this one's going to play. And then two frames later, this one's going to do exactly what this one does, did. Two frames later, this one's going to do exactly what this one did. And it'll be four frames behind this one. This one will be six frames behind this one. This one will be eight frames behind it. And now that creates this sort of, motion right here, that ghosting effect. And we don't have any of that um, overexposure because we've calculated the opacities out so that they all combine on top of one another. And now we have the sort of effect going on right here. And that is basically it on the tutorial, a little bit of math involved. And if you want to clean up an effect like this, you would actually probably right click on this and click nest. And basically what this is going to do is just going to create a nested sequence. And now it's all just contained in one uh, file here. And if we want to edit, we can double click and go back into it. But it just makes it a little bit more organized if you know, if that's something you want to do. But that is the basis of the effect. All you got to do is duplicate your footage, make sure all the opacity lines up and turn them all to screen. And you'll create that ghosting effect. Uh, you can make them all equal, you can make one master that has a more opacity. And then you can also make a fading where each one has lower and lower and lower opacity as time goes on. Thanks, everyone. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and them in the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.